So with the latest driver update from NVIDIA, they have added a update to their image scaling software and that has existed for a little while in the NVIDIA control panel. However, they've made it a little bit better. They've increased um, some of the capabilities of the algorithm a little bit, as well as they've added some more features to make it a little bit easier to tune yourself. Now, there is this long article about this from NVIDIA themselves. You can read if you want. I'll have that in the description. But just kind of briefly cover it. So if you're familiar with NVIDIA DLSS, that is their AI algorithm that is only on the RTX cards. And that basically it uses temporal scaling as well as AI to take multiple frames from the image and create a very sharp image. And in some cases it can even look better than native. Um, and that, that's generally going to be the best option if you play a game that supports it and you have a card that supports it. Now, unfortunately, a lot of games don't support it, such as like Apex, um, which is my main game. That's going to be my main focus for this video, but this will cover other games as well. So Apex does not support DLSS, as well as a lot of people with older cards can't run DLSS. I have a GTX 1080, which is a good card for its time, but it does not support DLSS. Um, a lot of people have like the 1660 and cards like that that don't support it, but still run games decently well. So this is a spatial upscaler. And basically what that means is that it only takes one frame at a time. It doesn't use multiple frames. However, it is going to be pretty much the best spatial upscaling that you can get. So like your monitor has built in spatial upscaling, like your, any TV does. It's generally not very good in those. Um, a better example of a comparable one would be AMD FSR. So that is available in a decent amount of recent games. And you might think AMD, that means it's only on AMD cards. No, it's available for everyone. Um, if you played Back for Blood or Blood Hunt recently, those are a couple games that I can think of that have that feature. And it definitely, it looks okay. It helps a lot with performance in those games. Um, but it has to be enabled by the developer or injected with a third party program which um, can be an issue with games with anti-cheat. So not necessarily the best option. So this NVIDIA option is actually available through the control panel. And that is really nice that like, you don't need any additional software. You just need NVIDIA. So to get this, make sure that you are on the latest game ready driver. It's gonna be 496.76 or later. As well as we're gonna go to the little cog and you wanna choose enable experimental features. So All right, so now that we're on the latest driver, you're going to go ahead and go to your NVIDIA control panel. You can open that with tray icon, or if you don't have that, you can just, you know, search it in windows and you're going to go to manage 3d settings and it's going to be in global. You can choose image scaling and you're going to set that to on. Now there's this option for overlay indicator. So what I will do is there's going to be a little NIS up here and it's going to be green. If it's working blue, if it's not doing anything, um, it doesn't actually show up on OBS capture, so that doesn't really help you guys, but you know, if you want to have that for your own purposes, then yeah, you can have that on. Um, you have the sharpening here, but this doesn't really matter because you can adjust it in real time in the game. Um, so just go ahead and set this to on and then reboot your, uh, you're going to have to hit apply down here. So let's put it off and then back to on and hit apply. And the first time you do this, you're going to have to reboot your PC. So once you come back from that, you can go to change resolution and you're going to see that you have this new scaling resolution section here. So it's going to take 85, 77, 67, and 59% of your native resolution. Now I'm assuming that most people who are going to want to use this are going to be on 1080p, most likely, you know, but maybe you have a better monitor than that. So, um, just to show what would be on different resolutions. So for 1440p, it would be these ones. All right. So you have these, you don't have to do anything in terms of like game specific settings here. It's just going to work. Um, now for any game that does not run in full screen mode, 
what you're going to have to do is actually change your desktop resolution in here. And that's going to activate the scaling. It's going to activate the scaling as well as the sharpening filter. Now, um, an example that would be Halo Infinite runs only in borderless full screen. So if you want to use this, you have to go ahead and use the scaling resolution. Um, but for anything else, you can just go ahead and launch the game. Now you can go ahead and launch it through here. You know, you can go to details you can optimize if you want. I wouldn't really recommend doing that. Um, but one reason you might want to use this is if you want to play a game with good graphics and just like run at a lower resolution, but have higher, um, FPS, um, you could do that. I personally would rather run a game with lower graphic settings and um, full resolution in general. However, for Apex, I want the most performance I can get because I play the game on a more like competitive level. So when I'm playing a game like Apex, I am absolutely valuing performance over anything else. So that is why I might consider using this. Um, and for anyone else who is in the same boat, you might want to try using this if you want to get a few more frames. So it will go ahead and add these different options to your game menu. So you can see you have your 1632 by 918. That's your 85%. There's your 77%. And here's your 66%. So my recommendation for the sweet spot would be the 85%. I think that that is where I found to have the most gain in FPS without like losing too much quality. Like I didn't really feel like there was too much loss in quality here. I think that I might actually try this for a while. Now I usually play on stretch res, which also, you know, lowers resolution to a kind of a similar amount. So I'm already getting FPS benefits if I'm playing on stretch res, but I think I'm going to try this out for a little bit, see how that goes. Okay, now I have my game in windowed mode right now because it's the only way I'm going to be able to show you my GeForce overlay. It's not picking up on game capture, unfortunately. Um, so you can actually go into your game filter and you're going to see that there's this new image sharpening section. Now I can't change it in here while I'm in this windowed mode. But you can see that you have this slider now. And that's going to allow you to adjust the sharpening filter on the fly. Now, my recommendation would be that you do about 15 to 25% if you're doing an 85% res scale. If you're doing 77% res scale, maybe bump that up to 25 to 30, maybe even a little bit more. And if you do 66% res scale, I would bump it all the way up to like 50 plus. Obviously, it's going to come down to personal preference. Increasing the sharpness will make the image a little bit clearer up until a point, at which point it will just be, it'll be too much. Um, so don't go overboard. But yeah, that is nice that you have that option now. All right, so now I'm going to switch over to game capture. Go back to full screen. All right, so now we can look at the settings. So my recommendation. A lot of you are going to be against this at first, but I definitely think that you want to run anti-aliasing with this. Now, with a lot of other like similar options to this, like with AMD FSR, it automatically forces um, TSAA in any game that supports it. So you might have the thought that like anti-aliasing makes your game blurry. However, we are sharpening it, remember. So... Personally, I, even if I'm playing in native res, I would be running my game with anti-aliasing and just a little bit of sharpening to compensate for it. Um, but if you're running at these lower resolutions, like you, you need anti-aliasing because it's going to make the jagged edges and like the shimmering much, much worse if you're not running it. So I really think that you need it and you can always up the sharpening a little bit to compensate for that. Um, I run my extra streaming budget at the max for Apex because I have um, a GTX 1080, which has eight gigabytes of VRAM. Um, I've actually done uh, monitoring and even with eight gigs VRAM selected, it actually only uses about 30% of my uh, memory. So 
even on cards with lower VRAM, you could probably get away with max, to be honest. Um, and the thing is that with texture streaming, like you're not losing any FPS. Like you maybe lose like two FPS for having textures on compared to having them completely off. Um, and the benefit is just like so worth it. Um, like you might think that like, you know, increasing this is going to make your performance worse, but it really won't. So I would have that up. Um, now you could technically, since you are lowering your res, you could probably bump some of these settings up if you want to. I personally feel like the high settings on Apex make it even harder to see like people, to be honest, like it, it just like it reduces the clarity. So my recommendation would be to, you know, keep them down if your goal is to play the game competitively. If you're playing a game, it's like, you know, like a chill single player game or something and you want better graphics, then yeah, bump them up because like you're lowering your res. So it's going to be boosting your FPS anyway. You're probably going to get a net gain. Um, but yeah, these are my settings for Apex. Um, I actually do have impact marks on low usually. Um, yeah, that's going to be basically all of that. Now, my recommendation would be the 85%. I found that this was the best like balance of performance and quality for me. I gained about like 20 FPS with this compared to native. Um, whereas bumping down from 85 to 77, I only gained like an additional like 5 to 10 FPS. And then all the way down to 66%, I gained like 5 FPS. So it's diminishing returns as you go. Now, if you have even worse hardware, it's going to scale more, I would think. I have a GTX 1080. So that's a that was a really good card for when it launched. Like it was the best card when it launched. Um, it's a little bit old now, but it's still a decent card. Um, so like reducing my resolution further is not really going to help me. But if you have an older card and, or a weaker card than that, like you have a GTX 1050 or something like that, then you're probably going to get like even bigger benefits going down. Now, also keep in mind. Um, the image quality is going to depend a bit on your monitor size as well and like how close you sit to it. So I use a 27 inch monitor and I sit very close to my monitor, like about an arm's length away. So for me, it's pretty noticeable if I go down below this 85%. But if you're on like a 24 inch monitor, you could probably go all the way down to 66% before you even really notice anything. Like I would imagine that, um, or if you're on like a, a monitor, even a bigger monitor, as long as it's far away from you, you could probably go even lower and not notice much difference. Now, also keep in mind, um, any like UI elements or HUD is also going to be affected since you are not scaling it in the game. Now, games that offer like a you know built-in resolution scale, those are obviously going to have a better method for... Um, Handling it, it's usually going to like render your UI in the native res and then only like render the actual game in lower res. Um, unfortunately, there's no real workaround here. So just keep that in mind as you go lower, your UI is going to get much worse looking. If we go down to 66%, we can see like the UI has become pretty blurry, even if the character models are decently sharp still. Um, as well as keep in mind that Enemies at a distance are going to be harder to see the lower res you go. Um, I'm going to now have some benchmarks and comparisons to show quickly. Um, but that's pretty much it. So I've shown you how to do it. Now it's up to you to figure out um, you know, if you actually benefit from it. Alright, so here I'm going to be showing the benchmarks from a couple different locations. So for the first one, I went to a spot on World's Edge. And I just went through each different resolution and took a benchmark for about 30 seconds, just to get an average FPS. And then I went to a spot on Stormpoint and did the same thing. Now, I don't know how much you're going to be able to tell the difference in image quality on YouTube with compression and all that, but I think that the benchmarks speak for themselves. And then you can go ahead and you can try. Um, the different resolutions on your own to see how the image quality stacks up. Now we can see that in the World's Edge benchmark, 
the biggest jump was from 100% scale to 85% with a pretty big increase. And then there's a decent increase from 85 to 77%. But the increase from 77 to 67% is so small, I don't think it's worth it. So you definitely are getting diminishing returns. I think that with a lower level graphics card compared to the GTX 1080, you're probably gonna get better scaling throughout. Like as you go down, it's probably gonna get even more. Um, but since I have a pretty decent card, it kind of tapered off. So I decided not to even do the final 66% test on Stormpoint. Just didn't seem worth my time to check that one. But you can see pretty much the same pattern. Big old jump from 100% to 85%. And then very small jump between 85 and 77%. So if you have a pretty good card, my recommendation is go for the 85%, if anything. Like you can tell that that is where you get the biggest jump. And um, you don't lose very much image quality. Once you get down to 77%, it is pretty noticeable. So unless you're on a small monitor, um, like a 24 inch, or you're very far away from your TV, you're gonna notice it. So I wouldn't really go down that far unless you really, really need the frames. All right, so I do wanna briefly touch on how NIS will interact with stretch res. So the way it'll work is that Basically, it will give you these new resolutions that are going to be the 85, 77, 69, 59%. And those are the recommended resolutions to use it with, but it will actually work with anything less than your native res. If anything lower than that, it will actually activate NIS. Now, it's actually going to use aspect ratio scaling. You can see it's grayed out, but that is the one that it's using. So essentially what this means is that it will stretch it to the vertical height of your monitor, but it won't stretch the width. So it's just going to keep it in the same aspect ratio as the picture is. So for a 16 by 9 picture, 16 by 9 res, it's going to stretch to the full screen of your monitor. However, with a 16 by 10 res or 4 by 3 res, it's not going to do that. It's going to stretch, it's going to have the black bars, it's only going to stretch vertically. But if you have a monitor scaling option to stretch vertically or stretch horizontally it will you can do both so with my monitor i have a full wide option that stretches it all the way now when you do this that means that it's only using the nis um upscaling algorithm on the vertical stretching it's not doing it on the horizontal stretch so the image quality is going to be basically the same as not having nis on it's Pretty much indistinguishable to me. I couldn't notice a difference. Um, I did notice a difference with NIS compared to like not using NIS and just stretching it on 60 by 9 res, like using like CRU or something to stretch it on 60 by 9 res. I do notice a difference with that compared with NIS. It's subtle, but it is there. Um, it's not really going to be noticeable with this. However, the benefit is that you get access to this sharpen filter in game which is really nice because it is the best performance sharpening in like any method that you can use um, unless there's a native sharpening filter in the game. So compared to like using the GeForce overlay game filter sharpening, like the one in here, either the Sharpen or the Sharpen Plus, those cost like 15 to 30 frames, even more than that sometimes to sharpen. But you can use this one, which has like, almost no effect on frame rate in my experience and you can adjust it on the fly. So I think it's worth it for that. Now, again, you can use this with any standard like 16 by 10 res. So in Apex, for example, Apex will automatically actually stretch any standard 16 by 9 res. Like it'll stretch 1400, 1440 by 900. Um, as long as your monitor supports it, you know. Um, but you can also use this with CRU. So, like, I have, like, a custom res here, 1680 by 1080 um, as well as I do have 1680 by 1050 in my CRU. So those are being stretched by CRU and by my monitor. Um, and those don't really... 1680 by 1080 doesn't have a vertical stretch. Um, so NIS isn't really doing anything with that. Um, but it is still active, 
so I have the sharpening. Now, theoretically, having NIS and having um, like CRU or just having your monitor stretch 1440 by like 900, something like that, theoretically, that would add like an extra um, a bit of input delay in theory because you're stretching on the GPU and on the display. In practice, I didn't notice anything. I didn't notice like any effect at all. It's very fast. So I think it's worth it to just do it. Um, yeah, so I think that if you're doing stretch res, you should just go ahead and you should just um, activate NIS. Um, even if you don't have any interest in going back to native res, um, you can use NIS, you can get the sharpening filter. If you want to try a lower 16 by 10 res, like 1440 by 900, if you have like an older PC and you want to do stretch res, um, you'll definitely get more frames doing this. And it should look a little bit clearer with NIS. Like this, this res particularly, because it is stretching vertically, it will look a little bit clearer. Um, but again, the horizontal stretch, not really part of NIS, but yeah, so you can use it. Um, I'd recommend doing it for the sharpening filter. Personally, I think that same principle applies to NIS as I recommended before that you should use anti-aliasing and sharpening. Okay. So the very last part of this video, I just want to touch on AMD FSR comparison since I did bring that up at the start. Now, I did have free access to Vanguard this weekend, so that game has AMD FSR. So I went ahead and compared FSR in that to the NVIDIA NAS scaling. And I'm not gonna specifically like talk about the benchmarks, but you can kind of see right here. Like I didn't really run benchmarks, but you can, you can see, I just briefly kind of checked the frame rate on different settings here. Now. What I found by playing a little bit and by doing these testing here is that you definitely want to use FSR if it's natively supported by the game. Um, and the reason for that is that first of all, the HUD will scale better. Um, I'm pretty sure like the HUD will be unaffected and it's just rendering the game um, in the lower res. But um, if you're using NIS, it will actually like lower the resolution for everything. So your HUD is going to be uh, much lower res, um, as well as I did actually see that there was a bigger performance gain, um, using FSR in terms of the image quality, I think they were similar. Um, so my recommendation with Vanguard specifically, um, or really any other game that uses AMD FSR, if you have a pretty decent GPU and you want to value the visual quality go for ultra quality like it has barely any difference in visual quality but it runs like a good like 20 plus frames faster if you want a little bit more fps you bump it down to quality i wouldn't really go below balance beyond there it gets really really ugly like really bad looking i do think that the like if you're going on the lower end then nas looked a lot better um, and a lot closer to the actual normal image compared to FSR. FSR has this weird like smearing effect because it has the built-in um, anti-aliasing built into it. If NIS gave me comparable performance to FSR, I would definitely just say go with that because I do think it looks a little bit better. Um, but definitely go with FSR for the better performance for games that offer it.